Do you want to increase being safe when surfing the internet? Do you want to minimize the number of DNS lookup requests leaving your network? Stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to do this. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to increase your safety when surfing the internet from any device in your smart home while minimizing the number of DNS lookup requests leaving your network. All of this without touching anything on your network. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button. Thumbs up. Now, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to talk about reviewing where we are with Pi-hole and Cloudflare. Then we're going to compare Cloudflare versus something called Unbound. And I think you're really going to like this. We'll walk through disabling Cloudflare if you've already got it installed. And then we'll actually go through implementing Unbound and helping you take your configuration to the next level. Now, let's get started. Okay, if you've been following my series on safely surfing the Internet, what we did in the last video in this series was to go through setting up Pi-hole and something called Cloudflare, which if you've heard about that at all, probably by a different name, 1.1.1.1, to where your DNS inquiries are encrypted to where it's harder for your ISP if they're looking to do information mining to sell the information on where people are going or finding out what websites you're going to. There's all sorts of things that can be done. And with this, it gives you additional layer of safety because that's the one thing when you're surfing the internet that that's going to be out in the clear. That's just the way DNS works. So what's going to happen is that this is going to protect you. We're going to talk about something called Unbound. And think of this as taking this as Cloudflare to the next level. Where with Cloudflare, anytime somebody does an inquiry, and I've found out very surprising. In fact, let's switch over here to Pi Hole that I've got. Now imagine my surprise when I found out that I've got one device. It's issued over 19,000 requests to the same domain. That's a bit much. Thing with the Cloudflare client, and this is not a criticism of it, just simply the way it works. Each time a request is given to it, it goes back to the Cloudflare system looks it up, hands you the information, and sends it back. If you've got a device that's acting up, much like we just saw, and I won't say it's acting up, it's just probably poorly written uh, code, where it's continually updating or checking for DNS. And this is not the first time I've seen this happen. I did consulting for a bank uh, many years ago. I found out that a particular service they had running on the server was issuing date and time requests to an NTP server offsite about 20 to 30 times a second. And this was in the days before you had Metro Ethernet. So they had a single T1 running out and it was killing them. So this is where having something like Unbound is going to be a game changer for you because it's what they call a recursive or caching DNS server. Say that we were, we were talking about before that we're going over here to this RTP update, uh, weatherunderground.com. The first time we do it, Unbound will say, this is something I need to remember. And it files it away. Now, granted, it's good only until you reboot the Raspberry Pi. There's a caveat there, but at least it gives you an option on what to look at. It has one more tool you can use to help minimize the amount of continual traffic going out over your internet connection and why query the same thing hundreds of times a day or in this case you can see more because I've had this Raspberry Pi up for about three days now so that's a that's a little excessive when, when you've got almost 20,000 requests. So this is where we'll go through setting up Unbound. Now I'm assuming you've already gone through the last video. I'm going to actually walk you through disabling Cloudflare because we don't really want them running at the same what we first need to go through and do to keep from bringing everything on the network to a screeching halt. We'll go to settings, DNS, we will enable Google DNS, we'll disable or deselect the Cloudflare client. 
we'll say save so that we can make all these other changes while we're in place and let's go out here we can double check something real quick just to make sure that we're probably okay let's go out here and if i can get a resolution okay we're good to go so i just wanted to check resolution very quickly so the next step and i'm going to go to my notes over here because i'm going to start this is what you will see in the description for the video it's i've got all the steps involved first we want to do we want to stop the cloudflare service Okay, we stopped that. We want to verify that in fact it stopped because not the technology would ever lie to us. And you see at the last entry, it says stopped Argo Tunnel, Cloudflare service. You had to, okay, so we're, we're good there. So we'll click Q. This is the part that's actually going to pretty much shut down the Cloudflare service. We're going to leave the code in place. And I'm sure those of you who are really deep in Linux caught the mistake that I made. I've already gone and fixed the problem, so we, we can move on. There is, I should have put sudo in front of the Cloudflare service uninstall. And that was really the, the sum and substance of the problem. So now we can move on to getting unbound installed. So let's move back over to our system here. We've got Pi-hole already running back on Google. What we'll do here is bring up that window. Okay, we're good to go there. Now to install unbound, we'll just copy that command. We'll paste it over, hit enter on the magic keyboard. Okay, I already hit yes, because it just flew right through it. As I say, Bob's your uncle, it's done. What we go through and do now is we need to go here and set up a configuration file and hit enter. Oh, and this is, I understand that Linux is case sensitive, but Windows is case insensitive. We're gonna pretty much leave this at default, because this is one, the configuration file that I found that really should be okay. And I'm gonna leave all those ranges there, even though we're not doing IPv6 and we're not doing these others. If I do them at some point and then we're set, ready to go. So we'll do a control X. Okay, so I did have the file already saved. Okay, I just hit the save process and didn't think about it. So now we've got that ready to go. Scroll down here. We are going to restart. Well, it says restart, but we're actually going to just start the command but restarts the way it does it okay so it's happy at this point at least if it threw any errors it didn't see anything so now what we'll do is we'll just do a cursory check and make sure that it is responding the way we would expect it to okay we did come back all right everything looks good there now since we will be doing some or have the potential to do some dns sec there's two things that we need to go do that's first of all we're going to test for a failure and for a signature okay on dns sec just so if you have to do some troubleshooting you know what it should look like so first we're going to go to sig fail if you notice it says status serve fail so that that's it returned a, a, an error that we were expecting. So now we'll go to one that says SIG. Okay, paste that over here. See, this one says status, no error. So this says we're pretty much up and running. So let's go back over here to my notes. And all we got to do is specify 127.0.0.1 pound sign 5335. Okay, we'll go over here to Pyhole's configuration, settings, DNS, and we will paste that in. Then we will deselect the Google DNS servers. Okay, so that appears to be okay. It says the settings have been modified, so let's verify that everything is working right. So that says that we've got everything up and running. So now it's just going to be a matter of when you go into dashboard, you can look and see that it's servicing the request. If there's errors, you should see that. Anything you need to get to, although while there are command line options available for Unbound, this way you can keep it all within the GUI. Now, before you get away, this is a value add that I wanted to put in. I was looking for some command line ways to interrogate Unbound to make sure it was doing what we thought it was, but the information was right in front of me. So we'll go down here, and if you look under Queries Answered By, well, there's 5053, and that was when I was using the Cloudflare client. Well, notice that we've now got an entry on here of 5335, which is the unbound client. So if we click on that, we can now see what clients that, or sites rather, that it has looked at. And you see there's weather underground. So I mean, oh, it's worse than I thought it was. It looks like it's at a five second uh, interval. So let's go 
back here to dashboard and I go back. Okay, so we did it twice within five seconds. Alexa was going doing some ambient weather. So this is going to be something that is going to not be a bad thing to keep an idea as to what's going on. If it's not something that's got in the cache before, then it should put it there. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.